Welcome back to the channel. My name is Beachy Bunny and today I am going to show you how I make spinach, artichoke, crab, and shrimp dip. You heard me. All those components in one dip. Also, I'm going to show you how I pick the meat out of blue crabs. If you're not familiar with picking um, blue crabs, um, it can be tedious work, but it can be fun if you know what you're doing. I'm not going to show you how I eat them. I'm just showing you how I'm going to get the meat because we want as much crab meat in this dip as possible. I have been craving this dip and it is time to show y'all how I make it. And I'm going to be using Christini's um, with the crab dip. So I'll show you each step on how I make it. Um, how I pick the crabs, how I steam the crabs, everything in between. So come along, take a seat, relax, and uh, yeah, come along and watch me make this dip. So we're on to the first thing we got to do, and that is to cook the crabs. See you then. cooking our crabs. If you didn't watch my last video, I would highly suggest it. Um, it shows you how I make my crabs. And um, for the new, you know, subscribers or the new viewers to this video, I cook my crabs in an Instapot. You heard me. I do it. And it is quick, it is efficient, and they taste great. So I'm going to cook about four crabs today. Um, it's just me, so I'm not making a big ton of crab dip. So we're going to cook four crabs in here, and I'll let you know how I got everything set up for that in one minute. All right, so I don't know if every Instapot has one, but if it came with a rack, make sure you have your rack in there like that. I put in a full thing of water in this container and it filled it up right at the rack. You don't want a lot. We're just trying to steam these crabs. So it's probably about a cup and a half of water, maybe two, depending how big your Instapot is. I think mine is just the regular standard one, but I know they make a bigger one. So with this, it was just literally about a cup and a half of this. Once I put the water in there, I added some Louisiana crab bowl in there and I just sprinkled it in there. We're not eating these crabs to pick them and dip them in butter, okay? We are just picking these crabs just to get the meat out for the dip. So once you put your seasoning in there and I mean, you don't have to put no garlic, you don't have to flavor it. We're just trying to steam the crabs. So once you do that, you're going to take your Instapot and you're going to hit saute. When you hit saute, it's going to warm up the water quicker so your crabs can cook quicker. You don't have to do this step. I just like to do this step. Um, if you do hit the pressure, high pressure button, then it's just going to take about 10 minutes for it to get hot. That's all. But while you're prepping your crabs and everything and cleaning them to put them in here, you can go ahead and hit saute and it heats up pretty quick. It'll cut the pressure time and your crabs will cook quicker. So we're gonna go ahead and get the crabs, wash them, make sure they're nice and clean. And then we're gonna stack them in here so they can go ahead and uh, steam up for us for the crab dip. All right guys, it is that time. It is starting to steam up and I got these bad boys right here. Woohoo! They're so pretty. And look at them. I know it look well, this one's not really that rusty, but this one's pretty rusty. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put them in here. You can stack them up however you want to. And then we got two more. He's a big boy and he didn't have another claw. Um, so he's peg leg Joe. You know, and uh, we're gonna put Peg Leg Joe in here just 
dislike on top of his cousin. And then we got Billy Joe right here. And we're going to put him in there just like that. That's all you're doing. All right, sorry, I had to wash my hands because crabs just be smelling like seafood, like raw seafood. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, I'm going to show you what it looks like. So this is how I got them set up. And uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and steam these bad boys. And if you're asking how long does it take to steam, get ready. Five minutes. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Five minutes. When this thing is ready, it takes five minutes. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and put the lid on. If it wants to cooperate with me. Put the lid on like that. We're gonna hit cancel because we don't wanna saute them, we wanna steam them. So once you turn it off, you're gonna hit pressure cook. It should be on high. And you're gonna make sure you put it on five minutes. That's it, five minutes, that's all you need. Make sure your little twisty nozzle thing is to the left. And we're gonna wait for it to come up to temp and your crafts will be done. So we're gonna go ahead and go on to the next step. I'm so excited. All right guys, we are sauteing some onions in the pan right now. I just put some sliced onions in there. You can put as little as you want or as much as you want. Um, I just put a splash of olive oil in there. We're gonna go ahead and saute these until they're translucent and turn in a little bit brown. Once we do that, we're gonna go ahead and add our chopped spinach. You can do fresh spinach or frozen spinach. I just wanna get this done quickly and I could have used, you know, you know, fresh spinach, but y'all know when you cook fresh spinach, it goes from in 2.5 seconds. So I just rather just mess with the frozen spinach. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue to saute this and then we'll add the spinach in next. All right, we're gonna go ahead and add the 10 ounces of spinach, as you can see. We're gonna go ahead and cook that really slow until all the moisture is out because you don't want your dip to be watery. So continue to cook this until almost all the water is evaporated from the spinach. All right, now that my spinach is kind of like unthawing, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of cooking wine in there, just white cooking wine. It'll help to break it down and give it a little bit more flavor. Fun fact, I do not drink alcohol. I have never drank alcohol. Will never even think considering drinking alcohol. I'm in my 30s and I've never been drunk. I don't know what that is. I don't know what a hangover feels like. And I'm pretty proud of that. And I know my parents were happy that I made that decision early in life because they would never have to come to Tampa and find me passed out in Ybor City. And if you don't know Ybor City, then Google it. You'll see what goes on in Ybor City. But they would never have to worry about their daughter being drunk somewhere, no. So I don't, um, I will cook with alcohol, like cooking, but drinking, no, you'll never catch me drinking. And I've never smoked either. Nope, never smoked either. So those are two fun facts about me, but I'm gonna go ahead and continue to saute this down until all the moisture's out and then we'll add our cream cheese. Also, while the spinach is cooking down, we're gonna go ahead and add our artichokes. I totally forgot about the artichokes. So we're just gonna go ahead and I just used a can of artichokes. They will wilter down just like the spinach will. So you're just gonna go ahead and add your artichokes in just like that continue to saute and try to get as much moisture as you can and cook it out, okay? And then once that is um, kind of cooked down, we'll add in some fresh garlic and then we will add in our cream cheese and the fixings. 
All right, now that the moisture is almost out of there, we can go ahead and get a microplane. If you don't got a microplane, you can chop it up, um, get a grater or whatever, but we're gonna go ahead and microplane some fresh garlic in there because garlic just makes everything better. We're just gonna go ahead and zest up some garlic. Be careful not to cut yourself. And we're gonna go ahead and mix it in. All right, now you're gonna turn down the heat and you're gonna add in your eight ounces of cream cheese. And I've had this at room temperature so it can come out a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that in. Make sure you get all the extra bits. And we're gonna slowly let that just uh, melt in there. And then we'll start adding in our seasonings. All right, so to make it more creamier, we're gonna add in some half and half. Just a little bit. So everything can kind of get incorporated. We're gonna add in some sour cream just a little bit for a little bit of tanginess. I say about one third cup of sour cream because that's all I have in here. So it's about one third cup of sour cream. And we're gonna continue to mix it, mix it all together, incorporate it because the cream cheese is still melting. All right, it is time to add in some cheese, baby. So we're gonna go ahead and get some mozzarella. Not a lot, because we're gonna be putting it on top too when we bake it. So we're gonna add a little bit of mozzarella in the mix, just like that. All right, and Parmesan cheese. And we're gonna add in some extra sharp white cheddar. Oops, I was about to grade the paper. That would be good. And that's it with the cheeses. Now that all the cheese has been incorporated, it's time for the seasonings. We're gonna add some Tony's. We're gonna add some all-purpose seasoning. We're gonna add in some onion powder. We're gonna add in some garlic powder. We're gonna add in some white pepper. Cause I don't like black flakes in my um, spinach artichoke dip. A little bit of paprika. And last but not least, some Old Bay. All right, if you want to add some brightness to your dip, you can zest in some lemon zest. So that's what I'm going to do. You don't have to, but I like a little bit of brightness. So we're just gonna zest a little bit of lemon zest in here. Not much, just a little bit, just for some freshness, you know, because you are putting seafood in here and seafood is really good with lemons. So once you zest a little bit of that up, you're gonna go ahead and turn off the heat, mix it in. And then we're gonna go ahead and check on our crabs so we can get picking the meat. And then I'll cook the shrimp to add it into here. And then it'll be almost ready to go into the oven. Okay, the crabs are done. So we're gonna go ahead and take off the lid. And I 
just wanted to show you the beautifulness of these crabs. We're gonna start with Peg Leg Joe. If I can get him out. Look how beautiful Peg Leg Joe is. He is very hot, kind of drippy, but I'm gonna put him to the camera for you. He is gorgeous. Five minutes in the pressure cooker, Instapot. So, Peg Leg Joe is ready to be picked and pulled. So I'm gonna go ahead and learn you guys <laughs> some techniques and how I do it on getting the crab meat out of the crab. All right, everyone, welcome back. So we're gonna, I don't know why I said we're, I am gonna show you how you pick your crab. I thought I was showing you how to pick Peg Leg Joe, but Peg Leg Joe did not record. So we're gonna hit up with Peggy Sue. Well, she's not Peggy Sue, so we're gonna hit with, I don't know, Billy the Kid. How about that? <laughs> I can't even think of nothing. Anyways, here it is. Here's the crab right here. And I'm gonna show you how I pick the meat. So we're gonna go ahead and start off by breaking off his legs. Just like that. Nice, simple, quick, easy. Break off his claw. Break off his other claw. Go ahead and just peel off all his legs, just like that. Then you'll have left is the body. How you can tell, if you don't know already, I've probably told you a million times, this is how you can tell that is a male. They have an apron just like that, and with a shaft just like that. A female will have an oval shape, and it looks like it'll flap up really easily so she can carry eggs. So that's how you can tell a male from a female. Now that we got that, I bought these off of Amazon for $5. It comes with two of these, which is a picker. It's a scooper and a picker, as you can see right there. And I will put the link in the description if you wanna order it, if you just wanna have something in the house. So you're gonna take the end where you like can pick. You're gonna lift the apron up just like that. You're gonna tear it off, put it in your container. And he's gonna look like this. Then we're gonna lift him up just like that. Ooh, he is full of juices. Be very careful because he is very hot. Do y'all eat the butter inside? I do, I eat it, but I'm not gonna put it in my crab boil, unfortunately. Not crab boil, I'm sorry. My shrimp and crab and spinach and artichoke dip, I'm not gonna put it in there. So it's a sad day, but I'm gonna dump it. Oh, hurts my feelings. Anyways, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna rip his mouth off. I know that sounds super crazy, something that Deadpool would say right here is the lungs, AKA um, dead man fingers. You wanna take those off. You do not want to put that in your dip. Okay, you're gonna take the other side off, just like that. Just make sure you get it all. Now you left with the cavity. He's got some whiskers too. You're gonna go ahead and you're gonna push in forward and you're gonna snap them in half, just like that. There is a little bit of butter in there, but we ain't worried about that. So we're gonna go ahead and get the meat. We're gonna go ahead and peel a little bit of this back and then we're gonna break it again, just like that. We're gonna go ahead and get our cup over here. All of that is white meat. So we're just gonna take, take it and just start scraping it out, just like that. All that's meat, look at that meat and you're gonna just do this on both sides just scrape it all out and I'm just putting it in this bowl so it can be easier to transport to my uh, dip I mean make sure you get all in that cavity make sure you don't leave no meat at all there's a little bit left and then You'll have an empty hole 
and you're gonna take the other side right here. You're gonna kind of just squeeze it just a little bit, break it apart, scrape all the meat out. It's got a little bit of butter on it, but it's okay. That's whole. And then you're gonna split it in half again and just start digging all the meat out. That's all you're gonna do. Just pick all the meat. This, this little thing is so cool because it would take me an hour just to pick some stuff out, but I mean, it gets in the crevices and it just starts to dig out all that, all that meat, just like that. Even in his little leg joints, he's got meat. Then you just break it up and make sure there's no more meat. Oh, look at all that meat I was about to lose. Oh. All right. It's clean. And then I'll start with the next one and then I'll show you how I clean the claws. All right, so I got the meat out of the cavity part. So this is how, if you really want to be tedious, you can get the legs right here. I just break it off just like that. And then this is where this little tool comes in. You're just gonna lift and crank, just like Popeye, how he like opens up his canned spinach. You are gonna do that and you're just gonna scrape out the meat just like that. This is an awesome little tool for five bucks on Amazon, shoot. And it was like a flash deal sale. So if you wanna be tedious, you can do every one of them, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I do with the claw right here. Make sure you watch out for these barbs because you will get stuck with them if you don't grip it right. So you're just gonna pull it off just like that. You're gonna take your little handle like this. Make sure you, I did on this side. So just make sure, you just kind of crack it just a little bit so it can break open easy. There we go. Make sure you watch out for those little claws. Kind of push it in and it should break pretty good. Man, he's tough. Me, go in there. And then you're gonna take your little handy duty thing and you're just gonna go in here just like this, whoop, a little bit of meat dropped out, and you're just gonna scrape it out. You see how quick that was? Just scrape it on out. Got a little bit of meat left. I mean, this thing comes in handy. And then you left with the empty hole. Then right here, you're just gonna take it, pop it, Pull out that bone or cartilage or whatever. I'm gonna take this, crack it a little bit. Do the same thing, just lift it up just a little bit. A little bit of meat may get stuck on there. You're just gonna scrape it in the bowl. Now you got all that meat in there. You just take this and look at that. You just scrape it out and it just comes right at the bottom. And it gets so far. This little contraption is awesome. It gets so far, you can even scrape out the meat in the joint. And when I mean the joint right here, you just take that thing right there. And look at that. All that meat came out of the joint. It got caught, but it came out. There ain't no more meat in that joint. Unless you wanna kinda twist it around. I'm pretty sure I got all the meat out. Scrape the rest of it. And there you go, it's empty. So that's how you clean crab right there. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and then I'm gonna cut up the shrimp, finish up all the other crabs and we're gonna put it in the dip. All right, so I've already picked all the crab and I chopped up the shrimp that's gonna be going in there. So now we're just gonna add it to our dip right here and we're gonna incorporate it together Make sure you get every bit of that crab out. And now we're just gonna mix it in. Just like that. Oh my gosh, I cannot tell you 
how good this smells. This smells amazing. Just make sure you just pick it up, fold it, pick it up, fold it. You want every bite that you take of this dip that has some kind of crab, some kind of shrimp in it. And then you're just gonna take it and smooth it out the best you can because we're gonna be putting some breadcrumbs on top and cheese on top. But first we're gonna go ahead and put the cheese on top. So we want it kind of smooth. We don't want it uneven. All right. So now that your dip looks like that, it's time to sprinkle on some cheese and then put it in the oven so it can get nice and bubbly. And then we're gonna put breadcrumbs on top. To make the cheese extra creamy, we're gonna take a little bit of the half and half and we're just going to just drizzle a little bit on top. It's just gonna make it extra creamy. A little bit on top, that's about it. And we're gonna start adding on the cheese. First, we're gonna go ahead and put some mozzarella on. And that half and half is gonna go deep in it and it's gonna make the cheese a lot creamier. And grate up some white cheddar, extra cheddar. Make sure you get it in the corners. We want this to be good and cheesy. Last but not least, we're gonna add on some Parmesan cheese. Make sure you get it in the corners. I don't know, I like the corners because sometimes the corners be super crispy and crunchy and just so delicious. Now that's done with the cheese, we're gonna go ahead and pop it in a 375 degree oven until the cheese is nice and bubbly and then we're gonna make a breadcrumb mixture. All right, so I got a tablespoon of butter and olive oil in the pan. I'm just heating it up because we're gonna brown some um, breadcrumbs and uh, we're gonna put it on top of the dip. So we're letting the dip get nice and bubbly right now with the cheese and then once we bring it out, we're gonna put the breadcrumbs on top. Now that the butter and olive oil is done, I'm gonna go ahead and put some green onions in here and saute them up a little bit. Just a little bit, just till they get fragrant. I love green onions, scallions, however you wanna call it. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cook that until it's a little bit fragrant. Just a little bit. Now that the green onions are fragrant, we're gonna go ahead and grate some garlic. I've just got one clove of garlic in here and we're just gonna grate this in here as well. I don't know about y'all, but I love to amp up my breadcrumbs. I mean, a lot of people just don't do anything with their breadcrumbs. They just straight out take it out of the can. Not I. We don't be doing that. I like flavor. So we're gonna just put a little bit of garlic in here, just for some fragrance. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Now that you got that in there, I'm just using Italian breadcrumbs. You're just gonna sprinkle the breadcrumbs. You're gonna go ahead and turn off the heat, sprinkle some breadcrumbs in here, enough to cover the top of the dip and you're just gonna make sure it's nice, mixed and incorporated with the olive oil and butter. That's all you're getting. You're not trying to toast it or anything because we're gonna pop it back into the oven. But when you mix butter and olive oil, it browns a lot better and you don't get that raw bread flour, breadcrumb flavor that, you know, breadcrumbs have. So this just gives it a little bit of oomph as you call it, a little bit of zest. And just make sure you just press it in the pan. Let it soak up all the butter, all that in there. And it's 
should look something like that. Now that it's all incorporated, once the cheese is all nice and bubbly and slightly brown, we're gonna bring it out, sprinkle this on top, put it back in, and then it'll be time to make our crostinis. I also cut up some crostinis. Um, I just put, um, I made um, like long oval shaped cuts in the ciabatta bread. And um, I just sprinkled some olive oil on top some garlic powder and a little bit of all-purpose seasoning so these are going to go in the oven too because these are going to be our dippers so i just took it out and it's bubbling i don't know if y'all can hear it but it's bubbling and it smells amazing so now we're going to go ahead and put our breadcrumbs on top i'm just going to scoop a little bit just like that i like try to get it in the corners you know I'm a corner person on certain things. Uh, dips, yes. Mm. What else do I do not like? I don't like cake corners. Mm -mm. Nope, don't give me no cake corners. Give me the center, middle, whatever. I, I don't do no cake corners. I don't like anything brown like that. Nope, 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 nope. But for the dips, absolutely. So I'm just like gently putting this and spreading it everywhere. So I'm just taking my spatula I'm literally just spreading it even, evenly just like this ain't gotta be perfect but you know presentation is presentation even if it is just me eating it I still like my food to look beautiful all right we're gonna go ahead and scoop out the rest in here and we're just gonna take it all the way to the corner all the way to the edge, just like this. Now we're gonna go ahead and put it back in until it's golden brown. All right, guys, I wanna show you the Christinis. One got a little bit toasty, but uh, overall, they came out beautiful. So these are ready to go. I am just waiting on the crab dip right now, and I will show you that in a minute. Look at that, guys. It is so beautiful. I'm so excited to dig in, so give me one moment. All right, guys, let's set it up. We're just gonna take some green onions and toss them on top for garnish. FYI, if you have a Sands Club membership, they got the fall plates out, so I'm so excited for fall. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get a few chips. I'm saying chips, but they're crostinis. I'm gonna get a few crostinis. All right, now the moment of truth. Let's dig into this bad boy. And I said I'm a corner girl, so let's do the corner right here. Oh my gosh. If y'all can just hear the breadcrumbs and the cheese. Oh, wow. Oh, look at that, guys. And then you're just going to plop it on your plate just like that. Grab a little bit more. And you're just going to plop it on your plate. Let it just fall off the spoon. And get all the corner bits, all the crispy bits. No man left behind. And there you go, spinach artichoke crab dip. All right, let's try this. I know this is gonna be hotter than Satan's armpit, but let's go for it. Cheers. Mm. <laughs> This is absolutely fantastic. You can taste the crab, you can taste the shrimp, the Old Bay, the Tony's. That hint of lemon zest is 
the chef's kiss, literally. Guys, you gotta try this. It is, it is just amazing. I am so happy. This is my dinner. I don't need nothing else. This is awesome. Oh my goodness, love it. All right, y'all, that is it. Um, that's how I make my spinach, artichoke, crab, shrimp dip. It is delicious. It's got this house so fragrant. Um, I cannot wait to just finish the whole thing up, but it's just me, so it's gonna take a while. But I hope you really um, enjoyed it and you know you got a little bit of knowledge on how I pick crabs and maybe you've never picked blue crabs before, so now you know how to do it. There's different ways. I'm not saying mine is the best or the easiest, but that's just how I do it. Um, if you are interested in the utensils, the crab utensils, I will put that link in the description. Um, if you have any other questions and need links to it, I will gladly send them to you. Just, you know, um, either um, tag me and just say, hey, I like your shoes. Where did you get them? If I can find a link, I will send it to you. Um, I will be doing another crabbing video in the coming week. Um, I'm just trying to pick out a day and if I want to go to a different location. So I will be on that um, Monday um, and seeing where I want to go. But anyways, I appreciate every one of my new subscribers. You guys are awesome. I never even thought about getting 600 subscribers within a week, but that is just awesome so thank you so much and continue to share with your family and friends i want to continue to grow um i'm going to continue to do some videos for you guys so look out for them put that notification bell up but anyways thank you so much for watching and i will see you on the next adventure